Hello, welcome back to another video. I have just learned a very nasty lesson. I've just recorded about three quarters of this video and then got a phone call and forgot to put my phone on silent. So it ruined all of it. So I've shut it all off now. Um, I've just been talking to you a minute ago about the lackey, how I've made a town map for it. Now I want to show you how I use that for vendors in my campaign um, using another module called Loot Sheet NPC 5e. So in the lackey, I've got one of my shops, the Third Eye Potion and Sundry. If I go to the scene I've made for that shop, I've got this music set as part of the playlist. So whenever they activate, activate the scene for my players, it plays the specific Third Eye Potion and Sundry um, playlist. So it's a cool little map, one of Seppuku's that I bought. Um, in here we've got Anya Trevali, who is my sort of apothecary and potion maker. If I open it up, You'll see it's got a different character sheet design in here. Now, you don't want to set your default sheet to be this one. If I go in, you'll see the default is still my regular actor sheet, but Anya's I've changed to be in the loot sheet one. That changed it to this sort of style. You can see in here, you've got type of sheet, merchant or loot. I've left mine as merchant. Now you can use it to make um, people who are actually, you know, iron chest and you'd fill that with all your loot. I don't like that. There's, I think there's a better way of doing that, which I will show you in another video. My permissions, you'll see I've set my players, this one isn't in the campaign anymore. I've set my players to be observer, so they can access the sheet, so they can see this at any time. So you don't want to go putting all your secrets and things like that in it. Um, and they can only purchase items if this type is set to merchant. Um, in here, there's options for merchant settings. If you just wanted to randomize what they had, you could make a table in Foundry, fill it with items, and then just click merchant settings and it'll roll and add a random inventory. I don't think that suits Curse of Strahd and how I'm using it. So it's not a feature I've used yet. Um, but in here, Anya then has her money and all of her supplies. There's also a biography tab. So anything you put in here, your players will be able to see. So this can be a nice little reminder of who they are or what they do. You don't want your GM notes to be in here. So I just added items in from the item compendiums in my foundry and I created some. When I've added each item in, you can see in here that I've been able to edit how much they're worth. Now, a drawback to this is it only goes off copper. It doesn't let you um, specify if something is... Um, you know, two copper or ten silver. It only goes in gold denominations. So I haven't had anything expensive enough yet where I've worked out how platinum goes into that. So that, that is that is a limitation. But I can't imagine many people are thrown around platinum in Curse of Strahd. So how many she got? Weight if you want to, and price. When your players are have a token on this map and are on the same scene as this person, they're able to open this up and click to buy, and it will remove an item from, you know, from the vendor's stock, add it into the player's bag, deduct their gold, and add it to the vendor's gold, which I really like. Um, they do have to be on the same scene. Now, when you grant your player's observer permission to this NPC, it will. They will now appear for that player in their NPC fold in the actor folders in Foundry, but they have to be on the same scene to buy anything. So if you, I me, mean, it's not a problem for my players, but if you maybe have a bit of an untrustworthy player or someone who's a bit cheeky, you don't have to worry about them going and buying potions while you're up on the Solenka Pass. They've got to be on the scene with that person. You can still apply stats. So this vendor sheet doesn't have any abilities or features or any of their strength or decks. You can still set all that. So if you have a vendor who you want to have still a bit of HP or some resistances or immunities, just change the sheet or when you first set it up with the default sheet, do all the stat based stuff and then change it over to this of the NPC. It's just hidden. It's all still there in the background. So I've used this in a few places. Um, my, I've been using this for a short amount of time, my players haven't actually met a vendor yet, but I or got back to it. They're stuck in Berez at the moment, but I've got things in here like I've set up a blacksmith as well in Valaki. 
Um, one thing I'm going to do is start adding to this guy's services. He's designing, um, he's been working with my ranger to design new arrow types. So I could have research items in here now or services like silver and a weapon. Um, I'm also working on, although it isn't finished yet, Jenny's very small sort of hovel on the edge of town. I've given her some more unusual and weirdly mundane items. Sells magic items, but also chickens. Um, very, very eccentric, Jenny. So yeah, that's a really handy add-on. So that um, I'll go into my add-ons for you, show you the options for it. That is Loot Sheet NPC 5E. I definitely recommend giving it a go. Um, thanks for watching. If there's anything else you want to see in another video, just give me a comment and let me know. But otherwise, take care.